OnePlus has been around long enough to mature from the disrupting startup it once was, and the OnePlus 9 and 9 Pro are the company's newest flagship duo. Hasselblad is a Swedish camera manufacturer and a new partner in helping OnePlus develop its camera systems. Although the collaboration efforts extend to both the OnePlus 9 and 9 Pro, in this review I'll be focusing on the 9 Pro. I'm Ricky for GSM Arena, and I'm going to give you the scoop on the OnePlus 9 Pro. The OnePlus 9 Pro doesn't have a drastically new design. There is glass on both sides, it has a metal frame, a hole punch selfie camera, and curved edges on the screen. The OnePlus 9 Pro dials the screen's curvature back a bit, which makes this phone a bit more comfortable to hold compared to the 8 Pro. This did help a bit with false palm touches, but I wouldn't say that the issue is entirely fixed. Our review device came in the morning mist color, and it's a nice change up from the other matte finishes of previous OnePlus flagships. Overall, the design layout is not too different from the 8 Pro, from the placement of the buttons and ports to the location of the SIM tray. IP68 water resistance comes standard on the OnePlus 9 Pro. Around the front is an updated 6.7 inch Fluid Display 2.0 with a sharp pixel density of 525 pixels per inch. The new version of Fluid Display now comes with a smart 120Hz mode that variably adjusts the refresh rate. Other than that, the screen quality is about the same as the 8 Pros. It supports HDR10+, motion smoothing, and 10-bit color as well. It can automatically adjust its temperature depending on the ambient lighting with the new color tone feature. It even scores about the same as the 8 Pro did in the brightness tests. You can expect max brightness at around 870 nits in bright environments with adaptive brightness turned on, so it's got excellent sunlight readability. At the top of the screen is an earpiece that doubles as a loudspeaker, and combined with the bottom firing speaker, the sound produced is strong and loud, and great for consuming music and movies in stereo. The phone got a very good score in our loudness tests. Would you love me for myself, not material things, forget all about my status and the cast I bring? Jumping into software. The OnePlus 9 Pro comes with Oxygen OS 11 based on Android 11. This update came with the OnePlus 8T, so we'll just brush over some of the basics. OnePlus phones support always on screen features with glanceable notifications and even a ticking clock if you want. There's one clock named Insight, which gives a visual representation of how often you're unlocking the screen. Zen mode shuts all the phone's features down, except for the cameras and incoming calls, for up to two hours. Once you start it though, you'll have to wait for the set time to finish before you can use the phone again. There are also some relaxing sounds you can play in Zen mode, provided by Tide FM. On this phone, the in-display scanner works very fast, and it's very reliable. If you keep holding the sensor after unlocking, you can set handy shortcuts to open apps or quickly dial a contact. Oxygen OS isn't as stock Android as it used to be, but the Android skin has a lot of useful settings and features that don't sacrifice speed and performance. The Snapdragon 888 powers the 9 Pro, which means you'll get some of the best smartphone performance in the market today. Paired with 8 or 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM, the OnePlus 9 Pro performs very well in benchmarks. OnePlus talked about some new thermal improvements with CoolPlay, and this includes some thicker graphene and copper materials to help dissipate heat away from the center towards the frame and then through the two panes of glass. So even after intense game sessions, the phone only got moderately warm, and the heat was well distributed, so we can say that the feature works as advertised. The 9 Pro comes with either 128 or 256 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage, and that's not expandable, so there's no micro SD card slot here. The OnePlus 9 Pro has a 4500 milliamp hour battery, and in our testing, the phone received an overall score of 86 hours in our battery endurance tests. Not impressive, but just about average for a flagship. The included Warp Charge 65T adapter will fully recharge the 9 Pro super quickly, in just 32 minutes. Now, you're probably thinking, doesn't this affect the battery's long-term health? 
OnePlus introduces 50 watt wireless charging on the 9 Pro. The new charger has two coils so you can charge the phone upright or on its side. And it charges up to 70% in half an hour. A full charge takes about 45 minutes. All that charging heats up the phone so it has a cooling fan that blasts air up the back of the phone. The new charger retails for 70 bucks and comes with a USB-C cable. You'll have to use the adapter included with the 9 Pro to get all 50 watts of wireless power. Luckily, there's a bedtime mode that will keep the charger quiet, but you do lose out on warp charging while it's active. As I mentioned in the beginning, OnePlus collaborated with Hasselblad this year to show that it's taking its photography proposition seriously. Hasselblad helped with the tuning of the sensors and tweaking of the colors so that they'd mimic the look and feel of Hasselblad's expensive medium format cameras. The camera app itself does get some Hasselblad tweaks like the signature orange shutter button, and the dials in the Pro mode are made to mimic the feel of the dials of a Hasselblad. The main sensor is a 48 megapixel Sony IMX789 with omnidirectional phase detection autofocus. The ultra-wide camera is a 50 megapixel sensor with a 14 millimeter ultra-wide angle lens. There's an 8 megapixel telephoto camera that shoots at 3.3 times zoom. And finally, there's a 2 megapixel monochrome camera for black and white photos. Daytime images from the main camera are good, but they don't show signs of improvement considering the partnership with Hasselblad. We're seeing lower levels of detail and higher noise than on the 8 Pro. Sharpening was also dialed up to compensate for the added noise. Color performance is kind of mixed. Images don't look as natural as they say. Sometimes the camera will oversaturate the skies and foliage, and white balance is generally cooler when shooting out in daylight. Also, the 9 Pro tends to underexpose, which crushes details in the shadows. Though the hardware is more impressive this year on paper, the processed daytime photos were not at the same level that the 8 Pro was. But it's not all bad. There's much improvement in other areas. The ultra-wide camera sees significant improvement all around. The 50 megapixel sensor is larger and the freeform lens really delivers on its promise to minimize distortion around the edges. See, no curvy lines. Dynamic range and details are very good on this ultra-wide. These 12.5 megapixel photos are even sharp and detailed enough to crop in on. The ultra-wide doubles as a macro camera. The macro mode will kick in on its own and it'll switch back if you don't want to shoot a close-up photo. Macro shots are sharp and colorful, and they look worlds better than shots from other low-resolution macro cameras. The dedicated 3.3x telephoto camera does well enough in bright light with decent details and colors. The dynamic range on here is not as good as the other two cameras though. Focusing is not as accurate, and color performance isn't always as consistent as it is on the main cameras. Monochrome shots are output in 12 megapixels, and they look nice, but you might see some noise here and there. The high contrast look can paint a more dramatic scene for your photos. Portraits are okay. They're cropped at a two times frame from the main sensor, and the result isn't the best. The effect is decent, but can occasionally break around hair or glasses. The 16 megapixel selfie camera is the same one that we saw back on the OnePlus 7 Pro's pop-up periscope, but it continues to shoot great selfies. On the 9 Pro, there's a noticeable improvement in dynamic range and skin tones, and details are still as great as before. Both the main and ultra-wide cameras see the most improvements in low-light photography, and this is some of the best low-light performance we've seen, even without using nightscape mode. The new main sensor can take images with high ISO while keeping images clean and free of heavy noise, and you can get away with never even having to enable Nightscape, unless you're shooting in super dark conditions. Enabling Nightscape on the main camera improves almost every aspect of the photo. Details, exposure, dynamic range, and colors are better. Noise is even cleaned up a bit as well. The ultra-wide camera in low light has vastly improved. Although it isn't as detailed and it can be a bit noisier than the main camera, Nightscape mode fixes those issues with the ultra-wide. It cleans up the photos and improves the colors. 
If you were wondering about the telephoto camera though, you can't use nightscape mode with it and using it to shoot low light doesn't produce good photos. The OnePlus 9 can record 4K video at up to 120 frames per second, but this video is not electronically stabilized, so if you play this back at full speed, you'll notice that it's shaky. When you slow the footage down, it's pretty smooth, but you'll have to process the footage through an editor to see those dramatic slow motion shots. Although the 9 Pro can shoot at 8K in 26 frames, the footage lacks detail and doesn't stabilize well. This high resolution video is not really worth the trouble of editing it. 4K video on the other hand looks great from both the main and ultra wide cameras. Stabilization works great on both and video is pretty consistent between the two cameras with great dynamic range and details. Colors are also well balanced and pleasing to the eye. Since the ultra wide camera got an upgrade, super stable videos look worlds better on the 9 Pro, but the mode is just limited to 1080p. The telephoto camera only shoots up to 1080p video, but if you switch to 4K, you'll get a crop from the main camera instead. I have to say, I was impressed with Nightscape video, but do keep in mind that this mode is only compatible with the main camera. Nightscape video has great dynamic range. Colors can be a little over the top sometimes, but the resulting video looks pleasant and well exposed. Like Super Stable, this video is also limited to 1080p. The OnePlus 9 Pro starts at $969, and at this level, there's no room for fumbles or missing the mark. If there's nothing spectacular or game-changing about the 9 Pro, and that's what's kind of disappointing. OnePlus is starting to become predictable, and the 9 Pro seems like a safe update for 2021. While the camera hardware is impressive on paper, we didn't see the overhaul that we were expecting, even with the Hasselblad partnership. Improvement can be seen in some aspects of the camera, like in low-light photography and the ultra-wide camera, both of which I was very impressed with. Otherwise, the camera is still somewhat inconsistent and it still needs some polish. You'll find that the 9 Pro has all the features of a flagship like wireless charging, high performance, and a beautiful screen, but battery life is just average for its class. So even with the Hasselblad partnership, OnePlus still doesn't deliver that same polish that other OEMs can deliver at this price point. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.